Hello everyone and welcome to The Nest. This is our weekly newsletter where we try to share our aviation experiences with you and nurture uh, the community that uh, is building and, and uh, constructing our kits and other kits. I've had lots of uh, people come on and, and say that they, they really enjoy watching how wood airplanes are actually put together. So uh, we're drawing in more people than just, uh, just our Fisher community. So welcome. Um, I just wanted to, you know, take a minute to talk about, you know, COVID and how it is affecting all of us. Uh, I miss going to the airport. I miss going out and and uh, seeing the guys there and having a coffee and going for a flight and, you know, having our hundred dollar hamburger and shooting the breeze about the breeze. Um, hopefully this uh, forum, this this ability to gather on a weekly basis is is somehow helping stop gap that um, that loss that we all feel, and uh, hopefully soon uh, we can all get back to those um, those endeavors which uh, fulfill us so much. This week I'm going to be speaking about uh, a new rib design that we're working uh, on for the Fisher Aria. Uh, I'll go through that a little bit today. Um, I'm going to also talk a little bit about uh, the free plan sample um, challenge that I put out last week and uh, let you know how, how positive that's been. We're also going to do an update on the Aria early bird special and uh, we're putting a, together another early bird special for the SF1 Archon. So there's going to be, um, we're going to try to bring over multiple, you know, three to five kits at a time. Uh, so we're going to be offering up some, you know, a special in that regard. Um, lastly, uh, again, we have uh, Algie Yates who's coming in to talk about the Youngster Tail Kit build. Uh, his videos have been very instructional and very well received by the community. I've gotten a number of comments on, on how helpful they are. So um, thank you again, Algie, for putting those together and, and, and letting us use them. So without ado, we're going to head right into the uh, Aria wing rib uh, design and uh, we'll review that. So here we go. This is Fisher Flying Products. I'm Dave Hertner. Welcome to The Nest. Our video newsletters provide weekly insight into building and flying our 15 wooden aircraft designs. Polini Motori of Italy is a gracious sponsor of our channel. Polini is the manufacturer of the Thor 250DS. Cozy Carb Ice Prevention Systems is a proud sponsor of this channel as well. Please take the time to watch our videos to the end as this assists us in the metrics that YouTube uses to rate our channel. Hit the like button if you feel that the content is worthy. We invite you to subscribe to our channel by clicking on the subscribe button and hitting the bell so that you are notified whenever we post our newsletters. Okay, we're going to dig into the Aria wing ribs now. Uh, the design goals, and I'm going to rip through this, there's a lot of stuff in this report that's given to us by our designer. Um, so the, the design goals were to minimize labor input and to minimize material costs, create a strong uh, FAR 23 aerobatic uh, level wing, um, have the weight as close as possible to the original design, um, and we want to make it accurately reproducible. Uh, front and rear edges of the, you know, would be beveled, uh, um, and we want to use the same kind of um, cap strip width on the top uh, where, the, where the skins are glued on. And so we looked at our materials, we've checked our spruce density, we've checked our birch plywood density as compared to it. Um, and we've, we know that the strength of the plywood is not as high as the actual directional, you know, green in the, uh, in the timber. Um, and the acrylic plastic sheet for possibly gluing things together and using that so we don't have stuff stick together. So the original design study, we picked an, you know, an airfoil we, and we analyzed it and, and found out that it was pretty close to um, the 35A212 riblet airfoil. It's not perfect to that, but we're trying to find out um, you know, the exact one. We're whittling it down through that, so we're, you know, we'll know very shortly the exact airfoil that we'll be using. That allows us to be able to accurately predict the loads on the wing. And... Um, 
A few other things that we did too, the nose rib design for the Aria was very uh, difficult to build from a builder standpoint, so we wanted to simplify that, and so we've gone and our designer suggested we use something like the uh, Whitman W10 tailwind nose rib design, so um, that's, a, that's something that we're gonna, we're gonna incorporate in there, I think. So the original ribs were um, built up from um, nine by six millimeter spruce, one millimeter, uh, birch plywood um, gussets. Uh, we found that um, there's a bunch of different ways we can make a replacement rib um, that is easier to do and meets those design goals of, of repro reproducibility and, and cutting the labor. So we could take a, a routed truss, so nine millimeter plywood and just cut all the holes out of it, make a truss out of it. Um, works pretty good, adds about three quarters of a pound per wing uh, with all the ribs. Uh, the next one we could take, uh, oh, sorry, there's a disadvantage because of the plywood orientation and whatnot. It's not quite as strong as, as the built up version. Um, we could do a routed out um, plywood rib that leaves the center, center plies uh, in place. Um, this reduces the weight of the overall piece, but uh, it still you know, grows in weight of about, about a pound um, for, the wing, for each wing. Um, the next one would be a three-piece uh, a three-piece rib that um, is glued together in a jig. Um, and this is easily done on the on the CNC machine um, and uh, works pretty well. And and yes, we do have to glue them up. There's some time involved, um, but we end up with um, a fairly light affair. Uh, and we've gone even further. This is the glue up area here. And then we've gone even further to to have a peek at, at how what would it look like if we if we actually routed out part of the inner web, and that uh, seems to be the direction that we are going. Uh, in that we have found that um, um, yes, we do have a little bit of of um, you know 0.84 pounds per wing increase, but uh, with some changes that we're making going from Okume to to birch plywood on the wing. Uh, on the wing skins, we can go a little bit thinner on the wing skins and um, maintain the same strength. And we actually um, reduce the weight of the aircraft by a certain amount. And it's almost a net, a net zero effect uh, when you look at the, 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 the rib change. So there's a, a nose rib and then there's a main rib and we go through that whole exercise again, um, talking about the design of that. And, and again, we're leading us to where we're gonna do a routed out center section and two outside sections. Um, it leads to reproducibility. We can, you know, we can put four or five pieces of plywood on, on top of each other at the same time and cut them all at the same time. So it just it saves us a ton of time. There are some um, some specific tank ribs and things like that that uh, we will have to be uh, looking at and how they're designed um, because a big chunks of them get cut out for the uh, uh, for the wheels and for the for the fuel tanks. Um, and then we've gone through and we've made a summary of weights and, and again, professionally done so that we, uh, we know what we're talking about. We know how, how much weight we're gaining in certain areas, maybe reducing in other areas. And then, and then, then we move on to the testing, you know, so, you know, we have to verify the manufacturability. We have to check the durability. Uh, we have to verify the weight and we have to test the strength. So this is a, 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 a diagram of how we might test the, uh, the strength of the rib. Um, those weights can be lead, they can be water in buckets, they can be a bunch of different things, sandbags. And so we will go through a, a procedure to test the built up rib to make sure that it meets the design goals for loads. Um, and again, going on to the area wing skins, um, just basically, you know, this is the a, a drawing of uh, the uh, uh, the Falco and shows how the wing ribs are or the wing skins are laid out there and the the um, the thickness of the uh, the birch plywood that is used uh, on that aircraft. And so from there, we've been able to make extrapolations and found out that we were going to um, basically from the Okume, if we go to the birch and we change the uh, change the thicknesses because of the increase in strength that we actually um, lose weight uh, on the airplane and that allows to net zero with the uh, uh, with the wing rib um, increase in weight so anyway um, that's it for now for this, for this portion I'm going to now go into and we'll talk a little bit about the challenge that I put up last week I was 